police was looking for me in, in every country. I was wanted by police and same time I became star. <laughs> I don't look for inspiration for nobody. This shit come from cocaine, from alcohol. I'm the wildest person, not only in rap business, in show business. He's always doing, you know, that people can do or afraid to do. Something inside me is can grab the fucking needle and put in my fucking eyeball right now. I'm in Poland now. I've come here to see an absolute rap superstar. He goes by the name of Popek. To me, he seems like an absolute madman, but I'm curious to find out a bit about him and what makes him such a big character and a personality in Poland. <laughs> What's going on? Who are you? Oh, oh my God! Chucky, that's you! Who are you, Chucky? <laughs> hey, hey, be careful with that! Oh my God! What's going on? Nice to meet you, man. This is good to meet you. Man came up with a big strap. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. This is diamond for diamond luck for Albany Gang. Diamond for single. Diamond for single. Diamond, diamonds. Uh, this one, diamond for Sweet 17. I released my biggest hits from 17 years. Wow, you got them all over the place. Polish rap really emerged in the 90s when Godfather of the Scene, Leroy, aka PM Cool Lee, blew up. But most MCs were mixing rap with rock music. It wasn't until the turn of the century that seminal gangster rap crew Firma emerged out of Krakow with unvarnished stories from the street. They had Bosky Roman, Kali, who recently made a big comeback, and this madman, Popek. Popek has made music consistently since then and in recent years has become a genuine superstar in Poland, making big tracks with international MCs like The Game from the US and Big Nasty from the UK. Arguably, he's even more famous for his wild personality than his music. He's done everything from choosing to cut up his face, to tattooing his eyeballs, to launching an MMA career. If gangster rap is about being an outlaw, this guy pushes it further than anyone. Popek, I just want to take a little bit of time to, you know, understand you and, and find out a bit about your upbringing and, and your life. Where did you grow up? Uh, when I grew up, I was Legnica, a very, very dark place <laughs> on this planet. And when I was 16, I ran away from, from Poland to Germany. Okay. I was in Germany for three years. And bam to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. <laughs> yes. so you moved about. You yeah, moved about yeah. a little bit. And in Amsterdam, two times in coma. I was, you was in a coma. Yeah, two times. What, 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 tell me about the first time. The first time was six months. I was sleeping six months. Serious. Yeah. <laughs> I took a nine LSD to my mouth. <sighs> Ten and eleven, I put here. And uh, coma six months. And after six months, I couldn't walk and speak for for three for three four weeks. <laughs> When I left the hospital, I said, I'm never gonna do this shit no more. Mm. You know what happened next two hours? You did the same thing the again. The same thing. I was sleep eight months. Eight months? Yeah. Absolute madman. Yes. Like, what was your first introduction to, like, rap music? Tupac, Tupac Shakur. My music started because Tupac Shakur. And when he died, I said, motherfucker, you can do the same in your language. And I started doing Polish shop with my, my band Firma. All of them picket pockets. We became from picket pockets. And after that, somehow, by magic, Five of us just got together and we create a new hip hop group just from the street. Where did you do the eye? Let's talk about that a little bit. So you tattooed your eye. Yes. Was you not scared? It was more weird than painful. For example, it's like your brother 
fuck your sisters front of your front of you and you just do, do, do like this you know that's <laughs> only uh, one thing i can explain it's so fucked up i go through it i lost like 35 percent of my visuality that's the price uh for my attitude and then so then did you do this this the scar how far afterwards did you do that this one no pain painkillers no nothing so I, why did you do it? I don't know, but something inside me screaming, do it, motherfucker, cut your face right now. I, f I feel like I, go, I have two different personalities. Uh, one want to go left, or one want to go right. Is it true that some of that skin went in a burger and somebody ate it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why? <laughs> OK, whose idea was that? Well, he owned money, a lot of money for my friend. He didn't give him back. Uh, uh, so I said, let's fucking... Make, let's make the face burger. I call this face burger. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Do something else, man. But you know what, bro? I'm looking forward to just seeing what the next couple of days hold. I know I'm rolling around with you. Ha, ah, but gonna that's going to be... Whoosh, that's going to be madness. Let's do it. Yeah. My guy. Popik suggested he drive me to the studio to hear what he's working on. But after hearing these stories, I'm not entirely sure I should be getting in the car with this guy. Uh, this is the studio. Is there a certain style that you're going for musically right now? Like... Right now, I'm going for everything, up from jazz to dubstep, from hip hop to R&B. I don't give a fuck what type of music is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just do it. Talk to me about the wildest studio session that you had. I, I tell you, in my garage, we didn't sleep for five, six days. Non-stop fucking music, music, music. In eight, in two years, I make like something like seven, eight hundred songs. Does the mood that you're in at that time reflect the song that you make at that time as well, or can you just hear a beat and just be like, I hear the beat right now. I hear the beat and I know what I have to do. Alcohol and cocaine. I write down the lyrics from for my for me. A couple of guys they came by drugs, and they didn't know they didn't know nobody, and they, I, I, I used them for video. I said, dance with me, brothers. Wait, wait, wait! I need clarity. Those guys that came to that video shoot day, yeah, yeah. they just came to check you to buy drugs, and that was Five it. Five minutes before, and I said, listen, before I'm gonna sell you something, can you can you just uh, uh, just dance with me on my video? And they say yes. And listen, the guy on the left, yeah. On the left with the hat, the white hat. He go crazy, but the tall guy with the bald one, he he couldn't know how to what the fuck is going to play it. Why on the left? Why on the left? Because I don't know him. We don't know me. He gave my drag. <laughs> From other hand, you've got personal track of Popak, you know, who is talking about his life. This song was about my all mistakes in my life. This is like very, very sad situation. This one. No, that album mm, uh, got named Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, obviously. I like... told you today I got up to a different personality. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they, cut, they, they tell me to cut my face and stuff. That's not me. That's some by the inside. Have you ever sat down with anyone and like had like long, deep conversations about some of the things that happened in your life? No, every time I, uh, this shit is coming, I turn this in joke. I don't want to go too deep because I'm gonna get maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna understand and I'm gonna get scared for it for for real. What really are you scared of, though? I don't want to see the dark side of my part of, of my of my personality. I stopped being myself from 11 to 16, I think so. Mm. I lost myself somehow. And I find myself into a different version. Did you ever have a good relationship with your parents? My father was my, my business partner. He was stolen bullets, that's it. And my mother, was, she, was, she couldn't handle it. She ran away with the other guy. Is you and your dad still? Are you and him still? No, my, my, my father is dead. They killed him in a, in a hotel room in Krakow. In a hotel room? Yeah, yeah. How, how do you feel like that affected you? I couldn't even go to the graveyard. Uh, I just record one song and they play the song uh, that day. And uh, somebody killed him in a hotel room. I think they, 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 they stolen something, some treasure. 
and they, um, they, they didn't want to split with him, and we were just shocking. Now is the best part of my life because I got family. I don't want to lose it. So I really got the Jekyll and Hyde experience from Popek yesterday. He's definitely a complex individual with so much going on in his life. MMA is one of his big passions right now. Jab. Jab. One, two. <laughs> His varied selection of hobbies also ranged from ballroom dancing to heavy artillery. Money up to here, money, money up to here, money up to here, money up to here. Wow, rotted. I was on skirt. Top boy style, yeah? Yep. Where's the shame? Oh? Huh? What was it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is bad than fucking sex. Do you know what he's doing? You can do this, oh, bang, bang, bang. But back to the day job. Popek has two shows tonight, and against my better judgment, it looks like I'm getting back in the car with me. Oh my God, fucking hell, bro. How long is it gonna take us to get to where we're going? The GPS show me four hours, 35 minutes, but I think we're gonna make it in three. <laughs> Four and, and I never, ever have a driving license in my life. I don't have a driving license because I was, uh, I was picking pocket and after that I was stolen cars. Uh, what the fuck, I don't need driving license when I'm uh, uh, stolen cars. Have you got your driving license now? No. Oh my God. I can't believe it. You not put me in the car for four, five hours with this man, driving 280 miles an hour down country roads and cliffs and he ain't got a driving license. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so what, are we here, yeah? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm not even going to lie to you. That is exhausting. Being in a car where it's like a roller coaster ride for four hours is absolutely outrageous. We spent a quarter of our journey on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> so I'm just happy that we made it alive. I'm not getting in this car again. It's made them little marks on the road look so minuscule. And I'll tell you one thing, I'm not getting in it. I'm not getting in it. Jackie, you wanna drive my car or this car? Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I didn't think it would get any worse. I'm done. Say? <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, bro. I'm done. <laughs> it's time for sound check, and being on solid ground is a welcome relief. Yeah. Hello, Chucky. <laughs> I don't even know what the rest of the night's got in store for us, but all I know is he's definitely on the liquor, yeah? Maybe a little substance here and there, but he's definitely talking about after parties. I think it's going to be a long night for the man them, to be honest with you. So people started to pour into the venue. The crowd was mad young, mad excited, and for a rap show, it was whiter than a snowstorm in the North Pole. He dropped some hard shit but the crowd really started going nuts when he played his more recent EDM stuff. And I started noticing a few of his main catchphrases. This didn't really feel like a rap show anymore, but watching Popek work a crowd is quite an experience. Chaos, bro. Obviously, naturally, Drew is a superstar in that. Every single person here wants to take a picture, and then it just gets a little bit rowdy. But yeah, 
We're going to head to the next venue now, because he's got another booking. But there he is already. Shit, fuck. We've driven another 200 miles, yeah? <laughs> We've basically driven another 200 miles to another booking. He's already in there, I think, getting turned up and lit to bits. I don't know what pop heck I'm going to expect when we get in there, but, but yeah, that's the other shubs. So we're going to go in and see what I go on. <laughs> yes, my yes. brother. He's cooked. That beef is ready. <coughs> the beef is cooking. So the rumours of Popet being the wildest guy in rap were no lie. He's lived an extreme life. I saw another side to him, though. And clearly his life experiences, especially losing his dad in such tragic circumstances, gave rise to that voice in his head that leads him to do these destructive things. He's not really doing gangster rap anymore, as his life's different now, but he's used his scary image to forge a new kind of career. Somehow, from such a dark past, he's kind of a mainstream celebrity out here, and he just wants to live his best life. Just promise me you won't try any of this at home. Don't try to play somebody else, just be yourself from beginning to the end. In the left hand, I got flower, and the right hand, I got Kalashnikov. That's me.